Welcome to Tube Amp Vita! Today, the Regency Tour. Well, welcome to D-Lab's Regency Tour. And why is that? Because as you guys know, I like to build my little boutique amps in repurposed radio cabinets. And to my right, I have the whole series of Regency receivers, okay? This is about the only time I've actually had them all in the shop at the same time. So if you look these up, you'll see they have this model number MR10, and that applies to all three of these. They just came out at different times, this one being the most modern, okay? So the reason I'm covering this is to show you guys how you can reconfigure these different models into cool little practice amps with my assistant here, right? Here we go again. My assistant. <laughs> anyway, Emmy was here for this last week. The we entire time he built these. Yeah, because we got snowed in. Yeah. So she got to see these all come to life. The first yeah. one was this one that you guys saw that ran the three 6SN7 tubes. You actually got to watch me troubleshoot it because I initially started that project with just two preamp tubes and there wasn't enough drive for the output tubes. So it was really quiet. So just like you, it's nice when you're really quiet. Maybe I should remove one of your tubes. Alright, so what we're going to do, we're going to cover just this receiver. And the reason is, is the circuitry in that receiver, in this case it's an amp, is the same as the little Heathkit 6CL6 circuit that I featured uh, about a week or so ago. Okay. So a lot of you really liked this circuit, but you were concerned about the availability of the power transformer, output transformer, and also the fact that it's on such a small footprint. This is only like maybe four by six inch chassis, okay? So what I've done is I've recreated this identical circuit, but I put it in this MR10 cabinet. So now it is on a nine by five inch chassis. So what we're going to do is flip this guy around, I'm going to pull out the chassis, we're going to walk through it, and I have a revised schematic that I've created, very minor changes, okay? Now, I found that we had excessive gain using two 6AV6s, so now we have one 6AV6 and one 6AT6. So you'll see that in the new schematic. All right, let's start the tour. Alright, as I said, we're going to concentrate on this repurposed MR10 as an amplifier, but I need to show you guys something about these other two. Alright, so about uh, two or three days ago, we released the video on the 6SN7 amplifier. This power transformer that you see right there actually came from this Regency receiver when it was a radio. Now it's an amplifier, but I found that the output of that transformer was perfect for this circuit. This is a 400 volt center tap transformer with a 6.3 volt winding for your filaments. So after you rectify it, you get about 250 volts DC. That's absolutely perfect for these little low power boutique amps. All right? Then we got the Model 7 here, which also runs that same power transformer. But in this case, I had to mill the chassis and mount him horizontally so it would clear when I installed the chassis. Once again, same transformer, same B+, and now I'm feeding a pair of push-pull 6AQ5s. Okay, So there's the answer to your power transformers, guys. When you find one of these receivers, you're going to have the transformer. And there is also a low-power output transformer that comes in all these receivers. I think they run a 6AQ5 output tube, so you get like two and a half watts of power, but unfortunately they're just four ohm. That's why I've been using either the Hammond or I have some other transformers that have a four and eight ohm tap. All right, now we're going to go into this amplifier. Okay, I keep wanting to say receiver. That's not a good thing, is it? Hard to say when you're looking at a radio cabinet. All right, so this is the 6CL6 circuit. And this one has the last of my Japanese output transformers. 
This one is the 7K primary with 4 and 8 ohm. And here is my last of the horizontal mount power transformers that is equivalent to the little transformer that you saw in the Heath kit cabinet. All right, let me get this thing out of here. I'll give you a guided tour and then I'm going to give you the new revised schematic for this little amp build. All right, we'll start at the top of the chassis. It's your power transformer. As I said, I changed one of the tubes now, so we have the 6AV6, which is your main preamp. Then we go to the 6AT6, lower the gain a little bit, and that feeds the 6CL6. And there's that output transformer. You see that Japanese number there, that TO2-10? Take a look at the bottom of this power transformer. It's a TO1-03A. This is also a Japanese part, which is very cool. All right, so we also have the D-Lab little Cub 1 rectifier cat board. And the rest of the circuit is identical to the Heath kit build, okay? It's just a little more spread out, a little easier for you to construct. I also added a little LED in this case. This is one of those jukebox lights. So it's this beautiful green LED. I'll fire this thing up at the end of the video. Controls, we got our input, volume, and tone. And of course, the power switch. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get right in on this because a lot of you said I can't see your wiring. We're gonna walk through this design and I'm gonna show you the new schematic. And at the end, if you guys wanna copy the schematic, email me and I'll send it right out. So as I stated earlier, this is just repackaging of the Heath kit circuit. It still has the little power supply board, switch, same tube line up, same controls, okay? This one just gives you a little more real estate to work with. All right, I'm gonna get right in here now, guys. Try to give you the best view possible of the newest 6CL6 2 watt amplifier. So here's our power transformer. Like I say, it's a Japanese one, it's very cool. My power comes in, goes through the fuse to the power switch, and then we have our high voltage output and our 6.3 volt output for the filaments. 6.3 is a little twisted pair, goes over here, hits the 6CL6 pins 4 and 5, and I got some 100 ohm resistors that do your little balancing, keep the noise down on the filaments. And we just branch off to the other two tubes, and these are pins 3 and four. Now one thing I didn't show you guys on the initial build, because I figured this out later, is the unused pins on the 6AV6 tube, which is pins five and six. You need to pull those guys to ground because they're actually some little internal diode elements and they'll pull in noise. I saw it on the scope, I was like, holy crap. So I have updated that on the schematic. The rest of the circuitry stays the same. So we direct couple into the 6AV6 with a typical fender one meg to ground, 68K in line, go into pin one. Then we come out of that guy with our tone circuit. Okay, so we have a little 0.022 coupling cap and over here is my 500 puff treble cap. Okay, now this tone circuit actually has a switch. Okay, so you can take the tone out of line on this model. My input pot is a 1 meg, and this guy is a 500K with built in switch. You can buy these through Parts Express. After we exit the volume control, now we're going to the 6AT6 tube. Okay, so there is a little 100K feed nits plate. There is our coupling cap, another 0.022 taken off, and he goes over here to pin 2 of the 6CL6. My high voltage using this Japanese transformer was slightly lower, about 20 volts lower. So my bias resistor now, instead of being a 300 like on the Heath kit build, it's down to 250. And this thing sounds great. All right, so let me go ahead. I'll power it up. You get to see my cool LED. And you All right, flipped her on. You can see our beautiful little green LED lamp. I'm just going to... Uh, Get a little G chord, I guess it's called. You see, you get just a beautiful. 
beautiful tone out of this thing and now it has a little bit less gain so it doesn't distort as quickly as it did before but it will distort so it's a nice little build guys and especially if you can locate one of these cabinets it really puts the icing on the cake let me put this in the cabinet real quick so you can see how she looks when it's complete and then go out there and find yourself a Regency. Well, there she is slid in the cabinet. I added this hole and this hole. These two were existing and of course the tuning was existing. So that gave me the opportunity to add a volume control and an LED. Kept everything symmetrical. Popped in some plexiglass here where the old radio dial opening was. She comes together pretty well. The hardest part is just getting the chassis screwed in from underneath. You kind of got to be careful on location, but I'll show you that too in a minute. It really turned out slick. So to mount the new Hammond chassis, I actually installed some clips on the bottom, you can see there. And then on the cabinet, I put a little washer to bring the back of the chassis up so it sat square. You see that little front aluminum angle plate, okay? So adding the washer, make sure that the chassis sits flush and that the controls on the front butt right up to the panel like they should. So you can see the chassis mounts nice and secure, new rubber feet, okay? And then front panel wise, when I was working on those Heath kit units, I had two of the large chrome knobs left and they look like a million bucks on this little guy. All right, so I hope this was good information for you guys. I'm trying to make this building process a little bit easier. In this case, now we've taken this circuitry, put it on a larger chassis, so you can see that you can take that same design and pretty much put it in anything you want. It's a very clean build. The little guy sounds great, and you don't have to mortgage your house to do it. This is all part of my journey to 100K subscribers, guys. Appreciate your help. We'll see you again.